What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to do a fly through text effect inside Resolve 16 with no plugins required. Let's get into it. Hey, if you guys are new here, my name is Josh Haynes. I'm a freelance filmmaker and I bring out weekly videos helping you guys grow as creators. So if you have not already, click that subscribe button and tag along. Today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do this fly through text effect inside Resolve. It's a super cool effect. It will spice up your vlogs or any videos you're really trying to do. Let's dive inside Resolve 16 and we'll go from there. This effect really isn't as complicated as you think it would be. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a video clip we like. I'm just gonna grab the same drone footage I have right here. Here. I'm actually gonna jump inside the color tab real quick and I am going to stabilize this. This is a step you do not have to do, but because the wind was super strong, I just wanna kinda help it out the best I can. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump inside the Fusion tab. So after you're inside Fusion, the first thing we're gonna do is click on our media in and we're gonna hit shift space bar and we are gonna look for a camera tracker. We're gonna add that in. With the camera tracker selected, we're gonna go up here to the inspector, camera tracker one, and we are going to hit auto track. Now, before we do that, let me show you a few tricks about this. I personally like to hit preview auto track locations on, so it'll bring up any locations that you can. Then with the minimum feature selected, you can bring this all the way down and you start to see a crap ton of these tracker dots show up. Keep in mind, the lower you bring that and the more dots you introduce, the harder it's gonna be on your computer. And I have a pretty beefy computer, but I'm constantly saving stuff like this because of how strong of features this is pulling on your computer. So I'm not gonna get too crazy with it. I'm just gonna find a happy medium. I feel like that's pretty good. I'm gonna make sure everything's set. I'm gonna leave everything else alone because we really don't need to do that today. I'm gonna hit auto track. I'm gonna let Fusion do its thing. Hopefully all goes well and it tracks it like it's supposed to. I'm gonna scrub through it and see. Yeah, it actually looks pretty good. Still under the camera tracker, we're gonna go to the third tab and we're gonna push that. That's the solve. After the solve has run all of its processing, we can see that the average salt error is 0 0.5570. I'm fine with that. Not really gonna dive a whole lot into what that is, but uh, that's a good number. 0.5 and lower is really good. If it's got a high number, it's done a bad track and bad solve, but I'm fine with the 0.5, so we'll just keep that there. We're gonna click on the camera tracker. We're gonna hit shift space bar and we're gonna look for a merge 3D. We're gonna add that and drag it under here. I'm gonna grab the camera tracker and I'm gonna connect those and move these up here just a little bit more. On the merge 3D, we're gonna hit shift space bar again, but this time we're gonna look for a text 3D. We're gonna add that. And then here, we're gonna go ahead and type in something. We'll just put Log 01. Now I know you can't see the text and you're wondering where it's at. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually do dual screens and on the merge 3D, I'm gonna bring it up on screen one. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now it's getting a little complicated. It's really not as complicated as you think it is. I'm gonna hold shift down on a Mac and I'm gonna kind of move to the level that I think it needs to be at. I'm gonna hold down command and move my finger around in my mouse and that'll kind of zoom in and out. And if we zoom all the way out, we can see our camera in 3D space. So to see this on both screens and make it a little bit easier for you, we're gonna click on the merge 3D. We're gonna hit shift space bar again. This time we're gonna look for a render 3D. We're gonna add that. And then we're also going to unclick everything. We're gonna hit shift space bar again, look for a merge, but this time it's just gonna be a normal merge. We're gonna add that, hold shift that, drop it in, connect the 3D render to the merge. And now we can see that it's brought it. You need to have these 3D renders sending it to a 2D merge. Otherwise, you're just not gonna see it. It's trying to cram too much information in something that's not intended for. So that's why you have these merge and render nodes. I'm gonna right click on here and I'm gonna hit line up to grid just to clean it up a little bit. It's getting a little crazy on our node tree. So what we're gonna do with the 3D text selected is we're gonna go down here to extrusion under the inspector, 3D text one. We're gonna add a little bit of extrusion depth, nothing too crazy. That should probably be fine. 
Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here in our 3D space and I'm gonna grab the blue and I'm gonna bring it real close up. I'm actually gonna hit shift in my mouse and kind of move around so I can see how close it is to my camera. It's actually a little, a little close, so we'll bring that back a little bit. We're gonna line this up to where I think looks good. That should be fine right there. Then what I'm gonna do is click on the render 3D and I am gonna hit enable lighting. It's gonna make this text dark, but what we're gonna do is click on the merge 3D one more time. We're gonna hit shift space bar and we're gonna look for lighting. We're gonna do an ambient light first. We're gonna add that, bring that over here. I'm gonna turn the intensity of that up quite a bit. That should be pretty good. Again, with the 3D merge selected, I'm gonna hit shift space bar, and I'm also going to look for another light. This time we're gonna do more of a directional light. We're gonna add that to our, our 3D space. I'm gonna bring it over here so we can see things a little bit better. Now I know this is a little bit confusing when you start getting in the 3D space, but a quick tip is when you click on stuff, you can see them pop up and you can start to see what it's selecting. So what I'm gonna do is click on the directional light. I'm gonna bring it forward some, maybe bring it up a little bit. I'm actually gonna click on the ambient light and I'm gonna turn the intensity down quite a bit. It's a little, coming in a little hot for my taste. I'm also gonna click back on the text and I'm actually gonna make the extrusion depth quite a bit deeper. I actually think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna click back on the directional light. I'm gonna kind of just align this where I think looks good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that and the way my lights look. It'll work for this video that I'm doing. I'll probably spend just a little bit more time fine tuning it, especially with 3D stuff. You can add an abundance of lighting and really go above and beyond to really add it into your scene and sell it. But for today's video, that will work just fine. The next thing you do is just kind of click through and see how the text is floating and responding to the environment. I don't really play it through until I'm really done, but just to get a good idea, I kind of just click through it. I am, however, gonna click back on the text and I'm just gonna kind of hold shift and move around so I can see this a little bit better. Up here, I'm gonna click on this rotate and I'm gonna kind of rotate the text actually a little bit to kind of make it a little bit more 3D. I'd probably retune my lights and just fix it if I move my text at all, but essentially that's it. That's all you really have to do. You can hop back in the edit tab. If you wanted to, you could actually speed ramp through the text. That would actually be kind of cool. Uh, I did a video on that of masking and speed ramping. I'll link it in the cards above. Go check it out if you haven't seen it already. But yeah, guys, that's basically it. That's how you do a 3D floating text inside Resolve 16. It's not as complicated as you think it is, and it's a really cool effect to spice up your videos. So if you guys are new here, click that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up on the way out. Drop some comments below. Let me know on some videos you want to see coming out. Do you want to see some more stuff that's like the 3D space kind of thing? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to find out. I'm Josh Haynes, the Iron Giant. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.